The controversial contract between the state-owned Flota Petrolera Ecuatoriana and the Amazonas tanker companies brought up during President Lasso's impeachment process. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that NATO is continuing on a course aimed at absorbing Ukraine and drawing it into the alliance. And in Sudan, clashes continue on Saturday between the army and the RSF parliamentary group, shattering a 72-hour ceasefire to mark the end of Ramadan. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. The controversial contract between the state-owned Flota Petrolera Ecuatoriana and the Amazonas Tanker Company was debated about again during the impeachment process against President Guillermo Lasso. On Friday, former Attorney General Inigo Salvador pointed out it was unnecessary for the State Attorney General's Office to review the agreement between the two companies in 2021. Current Attorney General Juan Carlos Larrea made a second call to the Oversight Commission of the National Parliament, insisting that the goal of the institution is not to review the content of the contract. However, he added the fact that the initial Amazonas tanker contract did not request an authorization is indica indicative of a legal violation involving administrative responsibilities of the official in charge. The parliamentary hearings to define the political responsibility of President Lasso in these irregularities will continue next week. In Costa Rica, police officers protested against the reduction in the number of days off for operations against criminal organizations. A group of agents organized themselves to carry out the protest during their free hours in which they obstructed traffic in different parts of the country, including the capital. While another group of agents was located at the accesses to the airport in the neighboring town of Alajuela. In this regard, the president announced the entry of 700 new agents and a change in the schedules of the uniform, who will now have four days off for six days of work, when previously they enjoyed six days for the same number of days worked. Cuba and Vietnam signed on Friday four economic cooperation agreements during a business forum in Havana in the presence of the President of the Vietnamese National Assembly, Wong Ding Hue. The agreements cover the sectors of civil aviation, electric energy and oil, as well as the construction, commercialization and production of building materials. Cuba's Vice Prime Minister Ricardo Cabrizas emphasized during the ceremony that in the context in which the Cuban economy has developed in recent years, Vietnam's participation in various sectors has been and continues to be important. Cuba and Vietnam maintain close political and economic ties that have been strengthened in recent times, in addition to the support and common stances in international organizations, companies from the Asian nation have increased their presence in the island's economy. In this forum are those for the production and marketing of rice, specialty coffees, grains, chicken meats and pork, the construction of photovoltaic parks for main power generation, joint venture projects for hotel renovation and marketing, as well as others linked to the construction material industry. In Uruguay, hundreds of retirees march in Montevideo demand an increase in pensions. A correspondent, Matteo Grille, tells us more. Conflict is on the rise in Uruguay, and now it was the senior citizens who took to the streets in order to protest. A multitude from the National Organization of Retirees and Pensioners took to the streets to make their voice heard in the face of the rising cost of living and the fall in purchasing power. They are really governing for what they once say were the rich ones. That they are in a country that is moving forward because we are better off. But we are better off because we have sold more, because we have sold at lower prices. But those revenues remain in the hands of a few, and among others. The retirees and pensioners continue to receive insufficient pensions and benefits. Under the slogan, the reunion is always, the mobilization had as one of its main demands the rejection of the pension reform project that was agreed by the government but is rejected by the political opposition and the entire social movement.
There is no way for a reform to be legitimate if it does not have the minimum social and political consensus necessary to carry out a reform of this type. We have practically 75% of the population that is unaware that reform that will have an impact on the people is being discussed in the parliament and that it is being approved at this moment in the Chamber of Deputies. The hundreds of retirees who mobilized went to Independent Square in front of the government headquarters and there they demanded that their right to a decent life be respected. We claim once again our rights, the rights of all retirees and pensioners, of all senior citizens. We do have rights, the right to life, to maintain a quality of life and to live with dignity. And here, we are demonstrating that we are going to defend those rights. The retirees also demanded to be received by President Luis Lacalle Pou, who has systematically refused to listen to them. In fact, he's the first president since the recovery of democracy 38 years ago not to meet with the largest organization of retirees in the country. The retirees said that they will continue to take to the streets demanding better living conditions for all. Let's take a short break, but first remember you can follow us on TikTok at Telesur English in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Friday that NATO is continuing on a course aimed at absorbing Ukraine and drawing it into the alliance. Peskov made a statement in a conference call with reporters regarding Thursday's remarks by NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg about NATO member countries agreeing to incorporate Ukraine into the alliance in the future. Peskov said Stoltenberg's remarks reflected NATO's anti Russian course and proved that Russian President Vladimir Putin was right to send troops into Ukraine, that he was safeguarding Russia's interests and the need to ensure its security. Peskov said Moscow is facing an aggressive bloc that sees Russia as an enemy and that jeopardizes the country's security. The environmental group Extinction Rebellion on Friday began four days of action in London seeking government attention to climate and biodiversity problems. The group hopes that 100,000 people will gather outside Parliament this weekend and so far has said it has seen 30,000 people register their interest. It hopes that 40,000 to 50,000 people will attend the mobilization which coincides with the London Marathon on Sunday. In recent years, Extinction Rebellion has organized protests against climate change on highways, airports and other public transportation networks against what it sees as government inaction on global warming. Claire Farrell, co-founder of the environmental group, emphasized that they demand citizen participation in their political process to determine how to fairly exist, exit fossil fuels. The Extinction Rebellion have pulled together so many people, even despite the weather, uh, to protest about climate, biodiversity and the range of issues that we're facing because it's not getting nearly enough attention by government, by business, by schools, right across society. People are becoming aware, if we're listening to the science, if we're listening to what's happening, that we are facing a devastating future and we have a window of opportunity where we need to do something about it. And it, literally, the earth is dying and we need to make sure, we need to stop it, we need to start putting things back and making the difference that we really have an opportunity to do right now. Foreign ministers of the Philippines and China met this Saturday in Manila to address differences in southern China Sea. Chinese Foreign Minister King Khan called for addressing disagreements through dialogue and keeping commitments for peace and stability in the region and the world. In the opening speech at the bilateral talks, meanwhile, the Philippine counterpart Enrique Manalo highlighted commercial relations between both countries and the developments achieved in previous meetings. In addition to the situation in the Southern Sea, 
The officials will address issues such as cooperation, agriculture, trade, energy and infrastructure. I hope that today's meeting will provide us with an opportunity to follow up plans and achievements made in our country's recent high-level interactions and move forward in addressing common issues and challenges. Telesur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through Starsat, dial 461 and enjoy a Latin American alternative broadcast. One final show break and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back from the south. On Saturday, fighting between the Sudanese army and the parliamentary group Rapid Support Forces continue in the capital despite the 72-hour truce agreed upon on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr celebration. Hundreds of local residents are desperately seeking to flee the capital, Khartoum, after a week of clashes. The Sudanese Doctors' Union said Saturday that at least 13 people were killed and 119 injured on Friday. People in the capital have been suffering frequent price hikes, power cuts and water shortages while the supply of basic necessities has also been severely disrupted. According to the World Health Organization, more than 400 people have been killed and over 3,500 injured since clashes broke out last Saturday between the Sudanese army and the parliamentary group Rapid Support Forces. And we stay in Sudan, hundreds of Muslim worshippers took part in Eid al-Fitr prayers while demonstrators gathered to support the army in the fight against parliamentary forces. In the Red Sea city of Port Sudan, the celebration of the religious holiday was held alongside a gathering of Sudanese citizens in support of the National Army. The National Military announced on Friday that it had agreed to a three-day ceasefire to allow citizens to celebrate Eid al-Fitr and allow the flow of humanitarian assistance. The fifth edition of the ALBA Games opened Friday in Caracas, Venezuela with the participation of the bloc's 10 member nations and Russia as guest country. The games will be played in the capital city of Caracas and in the states of Miranda and La Guaira from April 21st to April 29th. For the first time, the sports event will include the participation of a Russian delegation with 48 athletes. The last ALBA Games were held in 2011. The Games were born in 2004 after the creation of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America by revolutionary leaders Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro with the purpose of promoting friendship, cooperation and solidarity integration in the region through sports. Venezuelan athletes have already obtained the first results in the recently inaugurated fifth ALBA Games. In the men's road cycling time trial, Edwin Torres won the gold medal and became the first medalist of the fifth edition of the ALBA 2023 Games. He dominated the time trial held at the Camuri Chico circuit in the state of La Guaira. Meanwhile, Anderson Paredes, the Venezuelan athlete who won the silver medal in the men's cycling time trial, said he was thrilled to win because it was a dream come true. Josne Hibe Rondon, bronze medalist from Guaira, thank Governor Jose Alejandro Teran for always supporting athletes and opening the doors of the state of La Guaira to promote sports development. We have come to the end of this news from You can find these and many other stories on our website, tresorenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Teresa English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.